Today we're talking about the Hasselblad 501C and the Hasselblad 500CM. Hello, welcome back. Matt Osborne here from MrLacker.com. If you saw my Mamiya 6 video, you will see me compare the Hasselblad 501 against the Mamiya 6 size by size comparison. And anybody that owns a Hasselblad may have thought that was an unfair comparison because I had the prism finder on the camera and the hood, making the camera setup larger than it could be. So one thing I wanted to show in this video is how small Hasselblad can be. So here is my 501 setup, how I use it for model photography, which is nearly always with the prism finder and CF lenses, which are bigger lenses. And then um, next to it, I have my Hasselblad 500CM, which has got a waist level viewfinder and the smaller 80 mm C lens with hood. So I guess for the smallest possible Hasselblad setup, you take the hood off and that is how small a Hasselblad can be. I'll pop the waist level finder. So that's how you'd expect. That's kind of the, the classic shape of a Hasselblad. And it can't really get any smaller than this. The only way you can, because this is now the smallest lens with the most compact viewfinder. The only way you can get smaller than this setup is if you use the Hasselblad Superwide SWC camera, which is a different design. And so it has the same back similar lens but a fixed lens and then no mirror box in the middle making it kind of shorter. I've done a Hasselblad 500 versus Hasselblad Superwide in a previous video and I'll link that in the description if you've not seen that. It's an older video so it's a slightly different format but it'll give you hopefully the similar kind of content. Okay so to cover the topics we normally look at how much does a Hasselblad cost? I checked online and Considering everything else seems to have gone up in value, Hasselblads now seem pretty good value almost compared to a lot of the other medium format cameras. So we looked at the Mamiya 7, that was £2,000. We looked at the Mamiya 6, which is around £1,500 to £2,000. And even like a little 35mm like a CL was £2,000. Hasselblads cost around £850 used um, with lens, with film back, with waist level finder. So perhaps something a little bit like this. Although you may get the newer 80mm CF lens for the same price. Prices obviously fluctuate a little bit depending on the condition of the camera. So for £850 you can now have a Hasselblad for the same price as a Mamiya RZ67 because the Mamiya prices have gone up really rapidly over the last few years and the Hasselblad prices pretty much stayed where it was seemingly as I remember it from some years ago. So how does a Hasselblad compare to a Mamiya RZ? I'm not going to do a detailed side-by-side -side comparison of all the features in this video, but I have done a blog post previously, so I'll link those again in the description below, and you can check those out. In terms of for a visual, here is the Mamiya RZ, and here is the Hasselblad 500CM. So both of these cameras cost around £850 a use. The RZ is obviously can offer 6x7 film format, Although I tend to use mine with a 6x6 film back and the Hasselblad is obviously 6x6. So with the setup I use, both of these cameras shoot the same 6x6 film format. So then it's just a basically a matter of personal taste. In terms of very quickly my thoughts, the RZ waist level viewfinder is much better than the Hasselblad viewfinder. The focusing system on a Mamiya RZ, the bellows focusing, where it kind of comes out on rails like so is much better than the Hasselblad. The Hasselblad focusing system is like you would find on most lenses where you're just turning the, the distance ring and it's moving slightly but it means you cannot focus particularly close without using like a close focus adapter or like a, an extension tube almost which, which is an adapter that goes between the camera body and the camera lens. That will then let you focus close with any lens. So the first thing I did when I bought my Hasselblad was buy an extension tube because I just couldn't get close enough for what I wanted to do. Compare that to the RZ because it's on bellows focusing 
every lens will go as close as you want it to, which is very handy. In terms of lenses, I personally prefer the rendering of the Hasblad lenses to Mamiya lenses. The Zeiss Optics, much more character in the, the final image from my eyes. I would say Mamiya images are smoother and Zeiss lens photos from a Hasblad have got a bit more, I don't know, maybe more grit and a bit more 3D pop as they some people sometimes call it. Just like a, just more character. I spoke about the Hasblad being a modular system in my first Hasblad video, so I won't cover that in great detail, but basically Hasblad to modular cameras meaning the back comes off, the viewfinder comes off, and the lens comes off. That is a basic Hasblad. It's just a light box. In terms of sound, that is what a Hasblad sounds like. And there's your focusing screen. You can get different screens. You can get plain screens. You can get um, split prism screens like this particular one. Acumat screens are generally thought of as being better than standard screens. So I tend to use Acumat. The Mami is still better. <laughs> As I say, the old lenses are C lenses, which are smaller. And then the more modern lenses then went to CF lenses, such as this one. So the lenses I use are all CF lenses. I just happened to get this C lens free with one of the cameras that I bought. Then after CF lenses came CFI lenses, which are kind of the next step up. I think they're only very incremental differences. I don't own any CFI lenses. They came on the later Hasblad camera models. I use the Hasblad either handheld or on a carbon monopod like this. I'll put a link I'll put a link in the description. They're really good to keep the camera steady for doing fine detail portraiture. So what do I use a Hasblad camera for? Obviously a Hasblad camera similar to the Mamiya RZ are designed as studio cameras but equally you can take them out and about for things like landscape photography. Personally I've tried using Hasblads for close-up work, for wedding photography, for Hasblad landscape photography but most of my photos are portraits. You should probably recognize this as the standard Hasblad 6x6 film format where you get 12 photos per one roll of 120 film. What you may not be aware is you can also buy film backs that offer you 645 format and being a big fan of 645 I use 645 film backs and 6x6 film backs. The advantage of a 645 film back is it gives you 15 photos per roll. The downside of using the Hasselblad system doing portraits with a 645 film back in the hope that you're going to shoot in portrait orientation is the fact that the 645 format in camera is horizontal so when you're looking through the camera either like this or with a waist level viewfinder and looking down you're seeing landscape orientation so that means when you come to do a portrait you have to basically go like this which is easier with a prism finder but it's extremely awkward with a waist level viewfinder. One of the first videos I posted on YouTube was a photo shoot in Hungary using, using a Hasblad film camera, Leica film camera and a Leica digital camera. And in that video you can see me with the camera on its side trying to do portrait photos. I'll link that in the description below and I'll also link, if you want to see Hasblad landscape photography, I'll link in the description a video called um, Cine Still 120 50D versus 800T. I shot a roll of each cine still film in Hasblad cameras and shot both 645 format and traditional 6x6 format. So if you want to see how amazing landscapes can look with a Hasblad, do check that video link out. So here's some photos. Firstly, some landscape type pictures where I was out kind of hiking. The Hasblad 500 system isn't ideal for hiking. It is a much heavier system once you start to introduce multiple lenses, especially longer lenses like the 180mm. Is the Hasblad good for landscape photography? Technically, yes, it can produce some amazing images. Practically, it's not ideal because it's a heavier camera, especially once you incorporate multiple lenses and with some of those being longer lenses. So 180mm is a heavy lens. So if you're carrying 180mm, maybe a normal lens and a wide, 
you start to end up with like a big rucksack full of lenses and cameras. If you want a light and medium format camera system which will still offer you 6x6 film, I'd highly recommend you check out my Mamiya 6 video. But when it comes to portraits, the Hasbad really does shine. Here are some portrait images. One thing I find from the Hasbad is the view looks so amazing through the camera when you're taking the actual image because it's giving you a preview of the final image rather than using, say, a rangefinder camera. It really pulls me into my subjects closer and closer to the point that I find if I'm not careful, many of my Hasbad portraits are just kind of head photos because I just want to get closer and closer to the, the eyes or whatever I'm really focusing in on. I definitely noticed that with the 120 macro lens. I went through a phase of pretty much shooting everything with a Hasselblad to the point where people were saying, do you need to rename yourself Mr. Hasselblad? So it is an amazing camera. One big advantage of a Hasselblad 500cm or 501c that I use, they are fully manual cameras. That means unlike say the Mamiya 6 or Mamiya 7, there's no risk of electronic failure or there's no risk of being caught in the field and your battery going dead. You do not require batteries for a Hasselblad camera. I guess some negatives against a Hasselblad depending on your personal preferences. There's no auto mode on a Hasselblad and there's no light meter on a Hasselblad. Other than that, you're kind of buying into a bit of history. And I think if you enjoy a Leica in terms of build quality and the kind of, some people really enjoy the history of the, the Leica brand. If you're the sort of person which enjoys, say a Leica M3 or a Leica film camera, I think you'd really appreciate Hasselblads as well because they're fully mechanical, nicely built, and I guess you're buying a piece of history. This is what they shot the moon photos with after all. So, so yes, very enjoyable camera to use especially for portraits for me personally. If you're interested in a Mamiya RZ, if you're happy to have 6x6 rather than 6x7 format, you're going to have a smaller camera, arguably better built, that takes equally good or better photos for the same amount of money with no electrical issues. Mamiya RZ cameras also take batteries, so they again can have the electrical problems which you can get with a Mamiya 6 and Mamiya 7. Personally, I feel much more comfortable buying into glass and metal than anything with electronics in. In an ideal world, if you could have everything Thing that was manual, I'd shoot full manual everything. So I use Hasblads mostly for portrait photography. Favourite lens is probably the 120mm f4 macro planar for sharp do everything lens because it will focus close being a macro lens and then also being 120mm it makes an excellent portrait lens. The 100mm which often lives on this camera is what I tend to travel with because it's the second smallest lens after the 80mm. Kind of, I think it's better optically than the 80 And then other good lenses of which I really enjoy are the 60mm, very good, and it gives more of a 3D look. 150 gives kind of a bit of a vintage rendering. And then the 180mm f4 sonar, another amazing lens. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you enjoyed the photos. Did you like them more than the Mamiya 6 or Mamiya 7 photos? Please give me a like if you enjoyed this video and I'll know to do more medium format. But do not worry, more 35 mil videos are obviously in the pipeline too. I haven't forgotten about Leica and 35 mil lenses. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.